Hi, welcome to this instructional video about ATC communication for new pilots. Today we're just going to go over the very basics. I hope you find this video useful. So please be aware firstly that the information in this video might be out of date by the time you're watching it. It could be incorrect. If it is, please let me know in the comments and it could be different for your location or country. Do ask your flight instructor for advice. Please don't rely solely on this video. I don't take any responsibility for errors made whilst flying. So with that said, let's move on. Firstly, you're going to want to tune into the Automatic Terminal Information Service. This is an information service which is a, a pre-recorded uh, on-loop recording that gives you information such as the weather, active runways and Q&H. It reduces the workload that you have when you actually call up ATC because you already have some of the information at hand. Now firstly, it might be convenient to head towards a visual reporting point, which is an area on, marked on your chart which um, you can inform ATC of your whereabouts. Alternatively, you're going to have to give a position report to let them know where you are. Now what you'll do is you will give your registration and uh, contact radar and ask for a basic service. Then they'll get back to you and ask for you to pass your message. Now pass your message is a standard structured response and it starts with your registration or call sign, your aircraft type, from where you've flown out from, your destination, where you're going, your current position, your level, which means your altitude and your altimeter setting, and any other relevant details, such as if you're routing VFR. Then simply uh, read back everything they say. What they're gonna do is give you a transponder code. This transponder code lets them keep track of you on their system. Uh, that's gonna be a four digit transponder code, so be ready to write that down and read that back to them so that they know that you've got the information correct. Now, if you don't have a transponder, you're gonna say negative squawk, and then it's up to them whether they're gonna let you into their airspace or not. Do not enter their airspace until you have a clearance. You have to make sure that they have given you a clearance to enter the airspace. If a clearance is granted, simply follow their instructions. It's mandatory to follow their instructions. Keep listening to the radio, keep an ear out for your registration so they know that you're, they're contacting you. And remember, it's better to talk to them than not. So whilst you're in the rare space, they may inform you of traffic. They're not obliged to do this on a basic service, but if they have the time, it's in their interest to make sure that you are safe and you can see other aircraft. So they might ask you, uh, tell you about other aircraft in the area, and then you'll report if you have contact with that aircraft, if you've seen them. Now, they might also ask you to give a position report, in which case, again, there's a standard structure to this, and that will be your call sign, your current position, time in Zulu, or else say local, and your altimeter setting and your altitude. And then what your next waypoint is and your estimated time of arrival to that waypoint. So comply with everything that they say within the basic service and then when you're ready to leave the basic service and change frequency, you have to ask for permission. You can't just simply tell them that you're gonna change frequency. So um, wait for them to get back to you and, and grant permission to change frequency and then you're gonna tell them uh, which frequency you're changing to as well as uh, the station as well. And then it's polite to thank them for the service. When you reach the smaller local airfield, you're going to call up their radio with your registration. And then again, they're going to ask for you to pass your message, which is going to be the same format as what was previously explained in this video. Now, you might want to ask for join information. And when they give you join information, they're going to tell you the runway in use, the circuit direction, whether that's left or right hand, and they might give you the circuit height. They'll give you the local QFE to set your altimeter to and any relevant weather conditions and information. So it's important to read back the runway and use, the circuit direction and height and the QFE setting. Once you've read that back, simply plan your circuit, land, park up, sign in, pay the landing fee and have a cup of tea. After your cup of tea, on departure, be ready to do all of this all over again. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like this video and share it if it's been helpful. If I get a lot of views and likes on this video, I will create more instructional videos like this over the summer. And if you're looking to buy an aircraft or have an aircraft for sale, don't forget to visit findaircraftforsale.com where it's free to browse aircraft and post up adverts and find shares, hangarage, parts and things like that within your location really easily with the map search. Thanks for watching.